The journey to sow the seeds of wisdom has always been gratifying for Rukia Ibrahim. A student of Furaha Mixte Secondary School in Wajia County, but the mass exodus of teachers from northern Kenya slowed down her thirst for knowledge. We have really passed a lot of hardship. In the morning, he will come thinking that you will find teachers in the class, but you will end up trying to do what you can. First time, we never had a physics teacher. I was thinking of, of dropping the subject, but again, wanting to, to do some careers that is related to physics. Still, against the odds, she has been getting good grades, her last report card detailing all A's and B's. To overcome that, we have tried our best by trying to help one another. Even the few teachers that were here, who are the locals, they have tried their best. As he counts down to the start of the KCSE exams, Omar Ismail, whose favorite subjects of English and literature, is anxious. Even before this strike, we had another strike whereby the teachers left this region due to the escalating security. Yeah, we dropped some subjects like, uh, like computers where there is no teacher. It's been a tough journey for the students. And the management have gone into their way to recruit some UT teachers who are not that much qualified. And, uh, we have really uh, missed our trained teachers who are very much competent. That one has affected us really for the students not understanding some of the concepts very well. Just like the other candidates, Rukia and Ismail are taking it one day at a time. For now, they're just focused on finishing the KCSE exams. We are prepared to do the exam. And uh, though we are somehow psychologically stopped by the way our government, and even we are thinking whether the government will postpone the exam or not. I'm confident enough that for the much that I have done since I came here, I can really, I can tackle what I know, and I think we, I can make it. Furaha Mixed Day Secondary School has over a thousand students. Robert, Robert. Adan Kasim, the head teacher, says he lost almost half of the 36 non-local teachers. 16 teachers left the first day when they heard about the insecurity in Gariza. Eight were somehow strong enough to stay behind and uh, try to have the attachment of the school. The other team that left them were calling them to come back. So that is what encouraged them again to leave slowly. It's about that 24 teachers. I have only one teacher left now, Mr. Robert. I want to thank that man that he took all the courage. Despite all the signals and everything that these teachers were giving him, he said he wants to die a hero. The mass exodus ignited an education crisis. The managerial crisis. Two is the lesson attendance became a crisis, big crisis. You could see teachers teaching as much as 40 lessons. Even the timetable was not allowing some of some extent. We were even making some teachers who are English literature to teach because there are some concepts in history, in history telling them teach history. I, I was able to employ again eight teachers, the new ones now with the forms I'm given. Barely after four months, this one again left us. Because the others were still calling, calling them now. Consequently, we are told to look for contract teachers. These are all guards who have retired. And uh, these were very few. There were about 30 in the whole county, both primary and secondary. Those who could teach secondary were not even more than five. I only got one contract teacher. That now reduces my stress of biology chemistry for, uh, with that uh, contract teacher. After a long struggle again, we are told to recruit and train the teachers. For us, it was an advantage to have four, four of those. The others who are wearing shirts. That it is a similar story in neighboring schools. The world gets spoiled, not because there are many bad people, but because the many good people are not correcting the bad people. Wabera Mixed Secondary School too was affected. It does pain me so much. Why? Because you opened school on January, all the students reported. 
parents pay the school fees and you have no teacher and you are expecting them to, to, to come and teach at that time. In the short time possible, how fast can you replace nine teachers? How long will you keep the kid in the classroom? Uh, the first day maybe probably is understood, is, is understood. One week, two weeks, three weeks, what will happen? Down the line, the whole term gets lost. I remained with five, and those five could not be able to cover, and the time was short. We had to uh, haphazardly uh, jump up and down to find to it that we, we, we get teachers. All of us, class masters, and everybody will be concerned. I could uh, go to teachers who are pursuing courses in, uh, in, in, uh, in the universities in terms of teachers and train teachers who are paid by the B BOG and uh, that time at least uh, I mean ended with a bit of a problem. I had to now look for people to help. I got quite a number of form for leavers. He replaced some but it wasn't easy. Teacher Service Commission tried to replace by giving us forms but to get those teachers again was hard. We had to even travel up to Nairobi to get teachers to interview them, uh, give them hope, give them a lot of incentives to, to, to bring them around and uh, it took us time. Thanks God I got six and I'm still hopeful to get the rest of the three. 2015 has been a tough year for Muhammad Yusuf. The principal of Horof Harar High School in Wajir East, he's been forced to juggle between administrative work and teaching. He handles 40 lessons per week. Stress over stress. You know, you're almost on the verge of breakdown because there's nothing you can do. It's just like a doctor seeing a patient dying, okay? Yet there's nothing you can do much about it. Nine non local teachers failed to report to work in January. When somehow TSC took action, three came back. After I have reinstated them, they have closed the term with me. That was last term, part one. They left. Again, never to return. Learning was paralyzed as teachers stayed away. I have recruited two other non uh, locals. It was a reprieve for the students who had not been getting quality teaching. He left for home. I called him, he said, he's not coming. Why? I fear for my life. What happened? Garza massacre. But this is not Garza. That was a case. It happened. No, he could not give me a reason. He just left. And he, our hands now. It's a kind of what? We are almost compelled to close the school. But then we've said, if we close the school, what will we gain out of it? Let us just continue with the much we can. The refusal by the teachers to return to work early this year caused a major crisis at both primary and secondary schools. So we have got a huge backlog. To be frank, the form fours are way behind. The form twos the same. In fact, form ones don't even mention because our little effort, we are concentrated on the form threes and the form twos. I mean the form fours, form threes and form twos and form ones. First time work, they are still at first time work. Mohammed Hassan Sheikh, principal of Wajia Bor Boys Secondary School, was left alone. We are seriously affected by the issue of insecurity. Four teachers left. We have to combine the formers and the form twos, form threes and form fours. The school is just a few kilometers in the shadow of the hills marking Kenya's border with Somalia. There's a time that I was able allowed to give up. Then we sat with the county governor who promised us that he's going to employ teachers for us. This is the first slot to sit for the KCSE exams. I lost a, a very dedicated, self-motivated teacher. In fact, even up to now, the students, whenever they hear his name, they feel like weeping and crying. And have you talked to the teacher? I talked to him, brought him, he, he comes from Kisumu, brought him to Nairobi. We communicated, met him. While he was willing to come back, he was incited by his colleague teachers and he could not make it. 
700 non-local teachers in Wajia County sought transfers to other parts of the country. Out of 215 primary schools in the region, 11 schools were closed down. And out of the 204, proper learning is only taking place in less than a third of them. There are 40 public secondary schools in Wajia County. Due to lack of teachers, one school was forced to shut down, while limited learning is taking place in the other 39. Here in Wajia County alone, there is a shortage of 900 teachers in a region that already historically suffered from neglect and poor educational facilities. The most affected schools are those along the Kenya-Somalia border. But for Wajia, we are, we are a bit secured. We are more secured. And I cannot recall the history of it. I've asked people up to date any incident of insecurity be it banditry, be it tribal clashes, be it any form of terror attack, none absolutely. What would normally be filled with the shrills of children, now an empty and deserted school compound, The interclan clashes in Elda's constituency led to the closure of two schools in Lakole. The sight of the desks and chairs in piles is disheartening. School records and materials were destroyed. The last time proper learning took place here was four months ago. Even with calm, many people are yet to rebuild their lives and this has undermined education. These are hard times for schools in Wajia County. I'm currently at Inshallah High School, which is just about 25 kilometers from the Kenya and Somalia border. It's been 10 months since the teachers fled the region, citing insecurity and never to return. Meanwhile, thousands of students continue to play a costly prize, particularly candidates who are yet to complete syllabus, and chances of them performing dismally in the national examinations are very high. <laughs> Abdi Rahman Abdi Rashid, principal of Inshallah Secondary School, had no idea what huge challenges lay ahead when non local teachers deserted the school. Talking. He hardly rest. <laughs> He's forced to teach three different classes at the same time, moving from one to another to check the students' progress. The mass exodus of teachers has adversely affected learning. Eight of them lives. You know the burden, the burden there, because some of them were English teachers, others were math teachers, Kiswahili. I'm teaching so many lessons, almost 20, 28 lessons. I'm handling IRE and Arabic alone, 14, 14, 28. I shall have that. On top of that, there is also the managerial work that I'm also doing. So it is sometimes hectic. The desperate situation forced the principal to call for measures to address the situation. I'm lucky to get one teacher. It is a teacher, Kiswahili history, as a replacement. The school has tried to employ them and train teachers, almost five of them. So even there is a Mike Baza, who is also doing a distance learning over the holidays. He's also teaching as a, as a teacher, he's also assisting the students. Although the void teachers left could not be filled, schools employed non-trained teachers, while many local form for leavers volunteered to teach. 246 untrained teachers were deployed to various schools within Wajia. 90 were posted to secondary schools. These guys have already reported at the station. Schools are not able to pay them. It is my hope that the ministry will release their money very fast before the end of the month. Ibrahim Abdi is a former student at Horof Harar High School. Ibrahim scored a seaplane 
in last year's KCSC exams, he decided to volunteer to address the teachers' shortage that had all but crippled education in the county. That is inhuman because how can our, our, our students suffer while the rest of the, of the, of the school or, or, or other parts are reading? I was perfect in biology when I was in high school. Now I opted to teach that subject. I was teaching them from form 1 to form 4. Topics, one topic to another. When we were students, there was a lot of teachers. There was no scarcity of, of teachers, but now most of them have left. Now it's only two, three teachers out of the whole school. I was motivated by the scum son. It's not my career. It's only that it's, it's by the scum son who is forcing me to become a teacher. They have no basic training, just like them. The only when you are much more mature than them, that is it. We are giving free scholarship to any Form 4 liver who meets the cut and finds admission to any recognized primary teaching college. Some schools had to drop several subjects due to the lack of qualified teachers. There's another teacher who was teaching geography, who used to teach geography and uh, Kiswahili, but when he left, we opted to drop that subject. Like home science, like computer, like agriculture, these are some first ones which we could not get immediate teacher to teach. We had to face them out immediately. Imagine Kiswahili teacher, no Kiswahili teacher. Just I have employed one the other day. There was, there was no teaching. Only probably watching DVDs and this kind of thing, this to help them, you know, as a kind of a substitute for a teacher. Learning in all secondary and primary schools in the county has been going on as usual despite the national teacher strike that started on September 2nd. When the children were learning comfortably the last one year, these children were really suffering. We are in solidarity, we are supporting uh, the rights of the teacher, but also the rights of the child must be looked into. The Teachers Service Commission has on several occasions advertised vacant positions as part of measures to caution the crisis. Those who are not serious. Out of 166 positions advertised for secondary school teachers, only 65 applicants showed interest. One such teacher is Ibrahim Kidaga who was brave enough to head to a region deemed insecure. So welcome to the poor, and the there was tension, you know, it was after Garissa massacre and the rest. So I had to consult the family. I consulted them that I'm um, to be employed at Wajia. Okay, everybody was against that idea. But my mom said, you just go, uh, you can die anywhere. In Wajia, I think it's quite safe as compared to Garissa and Madeira. So that one is the one that has kept me this school. I teach biology and chemistry. The passion to teach and of course uh, to see the work that at least you've made a person. From nowhere a person becomes a doctor, a person becomes somebody and that is the joy of a teacher. So we had to at least come and assist the candidates so that at the end of the tunnel then uh, they achieve their goals. Alex Musau also took up the challenge. Teaching is a profession, is a call, that is. And uh, to me, I like it. So I said, as God is the protector, is the provider, I decided to come. And on my research, I came to realize that uh, Wajel is a, is a place which is no, is a, is a bit safe. We are far from Wajia town. People for easy like to accept come, it was very, very stressful. Yes. I have been giving them free accommodation, the house in the school compound, proper meals, breakfast, lunch and supper free. And uh, sometimes you even chip in their transport. And in, uh, once the teacher is motivated and he has the comfort, you can even be able to perform. Before Ibrahim and Alex came in, the school was relying on volunteer teachers, most of whom had no training. The situation was so bad that learners were forced to attend classes at weekends to make up for lost time. We have already covered the slums. 
The thing we are doing now is just assist the form fours in revising. Two kilometers from the school, we have the AP camp and the police camp. Sometimes they patrol around. We have never witnessed any kind of insecurity. Over 95 schools in northern Kenya were forced to shut down due to insecurity. Only 42% of children go to school in Wajia County. We saw the numbers uh, going down. And um, we, we, we actually worried because we we're talking about 25,000 kids who even in those um, schools where limited learning is happening have not uh, reported back, especially for the non-exam class. This insecurity challenge has effectively denied pupils and students one of the fundamental rights, education. Many worry that the number of teachers who refuse to return to northern Kenya will only increase. We have not heard of the government saying that uh, the security of teachers will be guaranteed, so please go back, teach, then your security will be safe. You'll be safe, will be guaranteed. So I feel the government has not done enough to help the crisis. The insecurity element that happened in our nation took us about 50 years back. It's an exaggerated fear. You remember when you pass through the streets of Wajia, how many mothers of down up, from up country are, are selling hamburger? 60% of our workforce um, is, is actually, you know, non-local and they're staying put and they're providing services. Over half of the school, uh, private schools are being taught by up-country teachers, both secondary and primary. 90% of the teachers are down, from down are the hospital. All of them are doctors and everybody are from, uh, they're from up-country. Why are they not targeted? What is targeting the teachers? This, Mr. Sosion has really exaggerated. We feel much safer today than we felt, say, pre garissa because of the interventions that have been done. Last time, I happened to employ a maths business teacher, and a local from Coast, who's a Muslim, whom I employed along with these other local teachers. He decided citing on insecurity. The same teacher is now being transferred to another school of his choice. Before TSC transfers the teachers, let them confirm the situations. And here, it's not the school uniform. There is fear that without adequate schooling, children will reach adulthood unable to read and write. They will effectively be excluded. Education in Northeastern Province right now needs an overhaul emergency that we can be able to help these kids. Otherwise, it will be a time to be remembered. The effect will not be seen now. In the coming years, almost four or five years to come, that's when we'll feel the product who lives now, who leaves schools now, that is when the, 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 the effect will be felt. Many children, both in primary and secondary schools, are yet to complete the year's syllabus compared to their colleagues from other parts of the country, and they are expected to sit similar national examinations. We are posting, you know, uh, the worst performance nationally, both in, 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 in primary and secondary. We were in the last five. There's things we were doing to try and remedy that, you know, the standardization of mocks. And then this thing happens, you know, the terror attacks happen, the teachers refuse to return back, and then the strike happens. All these things have complicated our situation. Frankly, we are worried, um, but we're making, we're making do with the, the situation as it is. These students might not be as prepared as they were, I mean, the rest of the students who left. As much as we have tried, even the performance for the class eight and for, for currently, we are actually, we are actually, we are actually wondering on what is going to happen. The government is still struggling to find solutions to overcome this crisis which has adversely affected education standards. If this function was devolved or there was an arrangement to have it transferred, we might have been able to find some solutions to the teacher crisis that we are having now. We've encouraged uh, the setting up of of uh, teacher training centers here. Northeastern belongs to Kenya. 
it, we will never so go back to anywhere else. We will belong to Kenya, and our children have the right to be educated. Let us only be given an opportunity even to have local colleges here uh, so that we can train our own boys. And uh, I'm sure in a matter of two years, in a matter of two to three years, despite the challenges, we'll go out of this problem. The solution is this, this student will become a teacher. That's why I have chosen to build the society from that side. Mm. So you want to be a teacher? Yeah, I want to be a teacher. Perhaps Ibrahim and Ismail represent the future generation that will radically transform the education system in this region. But until then, the crisis, it appears, will still persist. So that makes them stable. That's why right. this one. Rosongoi, NTV, in the county of Wajia. The, uh, group eight.